Today we're going to be tying a great searching pattern called the Lucky Strike. Uh, we're going to start out with a TMC100 hook. You can vary that in size from size 16 to size 10. Uh, today we're doing it in a size 10 just so that you can see it a little bit better with the camera. Uh, I've got some ADOT gray uni thread. I'm going to start right behind the eye of the hook in traditional fashion. Tie the uh, hook shank down with nice little base thread wrap of thread. Snip off our tag in. Next we're going to grab some moose. We're going to take a small little gather of moose. We're going to make a tail out of this. Snip it close to the hide. Remove the under fur. We're going to stack that. About how many fibers you want there? Eight, some, somewhere around there. You know, enough to, enough to keep the fly balanced on the water is the most important thing. You don't want too much and you don't want too little. It's nice to have kind of after the fish chews on it a little bit to have a few extra reserve tails. I'm going to make the tail approximately the same length as the hook shank, maybe just a little bit less, like three quarters. Tie that in right past the bend of the, uh, the barb of the hook. I'm going to advance my thread over the top of the moose, kind of down the body to, to help uh, with a little bit of flotation. To about the halfway point, and I'll kind of snug it down tight. A couple wraps on the other side just so it doesn't unravel on you. And then I'm going to take my thread and just kind of go over what we just uh, wrapped over and really lock it down. And again, that's just adding a bit of flotation. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to stack a small deer hair parachute. Deer or elk work there? E either or, you know, the elk, uh, the, the deer tends to have a little bit finer follicle uh, and a little bit easier to, to put a, a bunch on a smaller area. Elk tends to be a little bit wider. Both will work. Flotation is what we're looking for here. Flotation, flotation, flotation. Stack that. So I'll actually turn my my tube of my stacker so that when I grab it, the tips are going to be pointing, you know, uh, the same same direction as the eye of the hook. It's going to help to tie in that parachute. Um, so this is really the tricky part of the fly. We're going to measure that wing out so that it's just a little bit less than the length of the hook shank. It's going to draw in a bit, so you're going to actually lose a little bit of uh, of material there as the compression starts to take place. Because I've got eight dot thread here, I'm going to make like three or four kind of confinement wraps to help have enough uh, surface area so don't slice through the hair. And so that's a lot more than you'd use for calf. It just it looks yeah. like a lot more fibers. Yeah. If you're trying to parachute atoms or something, you'd have fewer fibers. Correct. So here we've got all those points kind of facing towards the front. I'm just going to kind of slick those back, kind of remove any of the other ones that look gamey in there. There might be a few broken tips or stub ends that you missed. I'll just take that wing and I'll kind of wrap the base a few wraps. The idea is here is just to kind of make a nice little platform to wrap the hackle on. Once I get that wing parachuted, I'm just going to bring my thread all the way back again to the tail. If I can just find my piece of peacock, oh there she blows. So I've got a peacock eye, you could use bunched hurl, um, the key here is going to be sparse. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take two little plumes off the main stem trim out a little bit of the woodier stuff. I'm going to tie that in directly next to the tail. And then what I do is I take take the, the peacock curl with my thread. I'll just twist it around. This makes a little tiny rope and the thread on the inside uh, reinforces the, the hurl. So that way we can make a little bit tougher body. So 
wrap it all the way up to my parachute and then I've got just a teeny tiny stub end off the back end here and I'm just going to tie that for right now so that it's pointing towards me a little bit we'll use that in just a minute the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a, a hackle from uh, a variant uh, saddle. These are beautiful feathers. Traditionally this fly could be tied with a brown hackle and a grizzly hackle, um, but the variants are nice because it's a single neck essentially with the, both of the colors that you're looking for, that mottled black color and the brown as well. So I've selected a feather off there, gauged it with my uh, hackle gauge. You prefer neck or saddle? in this case. Saddle is really nice uh, mainly because of the, of the length of the feathers. This is going to be more than enough to make you know a dozen wraps of hackle on, uh, on the parachute so you know saddle is preferable. I'm going to tie this in my side cup face of the feather facing towards the hook shank that down and we're gonna start wrapping parachute style. Now do you measure this feather? How did you decide the length? Um I went for a nice long one that had the right width. Uh, so you know I pre-gauged it on my little uh, deal there. Um, but basically you know if you if you end up purchasing a, a, a saddle like this you're gonna have more than enough feathers and especially for this variety where you're really heavy hackling the, the, the bug, you need to have a long feather or you need to use multiple feathers in order to get the, uh, the flotation that you're looking for. So like I said, we can put close to a dozen wraps of feather on here. That's the tough part right there, isn't it? Pulling that hackle back. Yeah, basically the idea is to grab as many of the follicles as you can and get them back with your with your uh, left hand or you know your non-dominant hand if you're a lefty tire, um, and get that stuff just kind of out of the way. The other thing that's a problem for people sometimes is that they won't make a couple extra turns of the thread after they lock the feather down, and that way if they take their fingers off of it and say the thread and the bobbin slips you know, to, the, to the right, then you, you, would, you would lose the, the fly. So with the little remaining stubs of peacock curl, I'm just going to tie or uh, wrap those forward just a little tiny bit to make a teeny tiny thorax on there. Or not. Or not. I don't think that's critical really. It's just a little finish to the fly. Now we can just build up a head. Good finish. Let's turn it over and kind of snip those peacock stubs. And there you have a, a finished lucky strike. You're going to use that fly all, all season? You're going to use it more in the fall? What's it going to be your bug? Um, well, this so far it seems to be you know a, a good year-round pattern for searching stuff out. Um, you can use it you know pretty much spring, summer, and fall, just vary the sizes. And the nice thing about the peacock curl body is that it's not really green or brown or or tan, it's kind of all of those colors at the same time. You know, obviously peacock's pretty fishy stuff, so. Um, yeah, year-round searching pattern. Great.